Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the official launch and inauguration of the Maritime Sectoral Group of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry. My name is Shegun Alabi. I'm your anchor this afternoon on this event. Um, without wasting much time this afternoon, I would like to start with a brief introduction. It's my pleasure to welcome the president of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry in the person of Mrs. Toki Mabogunje to this event. Good afternoon. Madam President, good to have you. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, Ma. Also, we have the vice president of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry and Chairperson of the Membership and Welfare Committee of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, in the person of Mrs. Mujisola Bakari. Good to have you, Madam Chairperson. Also, it's my pleasure to welcome the Director General of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, in the person of Dr. Muda Yusuf. DG, good to have you, sir. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. You're welcome, sir. We have eminent guests here present, but I would like to, at this point, um, invite the chairperson of the membership and welfare committee of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, in the person of Mrs. Muji Sola Bakari, to please give us the opening remarks. Madam Chairperson, over to you, ma. Thank you very much, um, Shegun Alabi. Thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Apologies, you didn't hear my good afternoon earlier. I struggled to unmute. So good afternoon, and uh, nice to have you all here. The President, Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Mrs. Toki Mabogunje, all council members here present, and indeed um, all the members of the Membership and Welfare Committee, Chief Adebayo Sarumi, the former Managing Director, Nigerian Ports Authority, Mrs. Margaret Orakwisi, Chairperson, Ship Owners Forum Nigeria, and Chairperson of the Maritime Trade Group at NASIMA, our Director General, Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Dr. Muda Yusuf, maritime sector stakeholders, ladies and gentlemen, and of course, gentlemen of the press. I am delighted to welcome all our distinguished guests and maritime st sector stakeholders to this inauguration ceremony of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry Maritime Sector Group. Let me especially welcome our able president, Mrs. Toki Mabud Kunje. You are welcome, madam, and thank you for all your support all the time. And our guests of honor, Chief Adebayo Sarumi, a, veter a veteran in the maritime industry and former managing director of the Nigerian Port Authority. I also welcome Mrs. Margaret Orakusi, Chairperson Ship Owners Forum, Nigeria, and Chairperson of the Maritime Trade Group at NASIMA. As a leading private sector advocacy institution, we recognize the critical role of the maritime sector in the development of the Nigerian economy. The sector is actually at the heart of international trade. Without an efficient maritime sector, an economy such as ours cannot progress. This is because trade and commerce will be significantly constrained. The impact of an inefficient maritime sector is systemic, affecting practically all sectors of the economy. Without maritime, we cannot talk of trade, both exports and imports. It will also be difficult to diversify the economy. 
idea for advise us and it is very impertinent that we diversify the economy. We must fix our maritime sector. The Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry therefore seeks to play a major role in influencing policies and regulations to create an enabling environment for investors in the sector. This is what informed the decision of the Council of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry under the able leadership of our president, Mrs. Toki to create the maritime sector group. I have no doubt that this group will bring tremendous value to stakeholders to those who are here who are not yet members of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry. I encourage you to join us, pick up your membership forms with the chamber. And this is very going to be very easy for you to do. Please just drop us your email um, during this um, period so that we can readily send you all the necessary information as to your joining. And of course, there are a lot of values, you know, for you to join the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry so that we can quickly board you and you can start, you know, um, enjoying the benefit from the rich value proposition that this initiative offers and the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, of course. Once again, I welcome all our guests and stakeholders to this inauguration ceremony. Thank you for your kind attention. I am Mujisola Bakari, Vice President and Chairperson of the Lagos Commerce, Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry Membership and Welfare Committee. Thank you all very much for listening. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Madam Vice President. Um, sorry for that um, little interregnum. Um, now that I'm audible, it's my pleasure to welcome the chief host of today's event and the president of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, the 23rd president and third female president of the chamber, in the person of Mrs. Toki Mabogunje for the welcome address. Madam President, over to you, ma. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much, Dr. Shegmu Alabi. Chipa Debayos Arumi, former managing director, Nigeria Port Authority. Mrs. Margaret Orakusi, chairperson, ship owners forum, Nigeria and chairperson of the Maritime Group of Nasima. This is Moji Sala Bakari, vice president and chairperson membership and welfare committee of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Ms. Fumilaya Folorusho, secretary general, Africa Ship Owners Association. Dr. Muda Yusuf, director general of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry all members of council of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry here present. Gentlemen and ladies of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to welcome everyone to the virtual inauguration of the Maritime Group of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, as you may be aware, the Lagos Chamber has the mandate to promote and protect the interests of its over 2,500 members and the wider business community through public policy advocacy and facilitation of commercial and industrial opportunity among others. The formation of the Maritime Group was born out of the need to consolidate the Chamber's advocacy activities in this sector, considering its strategic role in trade facilitation and global supply chain linkages. The creation of this group is aimed at making the Chamber's advocacy agenda more impactful in the maritime sector, particularly within the framework of the African Continental Free Trade Area, the AFCFTA. The group serves as a platform for the Chamber to engage relevant authorities in the maritime space on industry and company-specific issues 
affecting investors. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, no economy can be competitive in the international trade arena without an efficient and functional maritime sector. Over 90% of Nigeria's imports and exports to the rest of the world are conveyed via sea, underscoring the strategic importance of maritime to the domestic and global economy. Despite the strategic importance of maritime activities to trade facilitation and industrialization, Nigerian seaports remain largely underdeveloped and poorly ranked amongst its peers in West Africa's sub-region. There are several challenges bordering on delays in import and export processes, heavy human and vehicular congestion around the ports, policy and regulatory inconsistencies, infrastructure and logistic constraints, difficulty in gaining access to the ports, security concerns, and incidences of corruption and infractions among regulatory agencies that are the, that are the ports. This has continued to compl complicate the ease of doing business at the port environment with gross implications for investment promotion. As such, this situation underscores the imperative of critical reforms in the maritime sector. The maritime sector remains one of the chamber's top priorities as far as its advocacy agenda is concerned. Our advocacy has centered around harmonizing operations into a single interface station, adopting of single trade window, full automation of cargo clearance processes, resolving arbitrariness of import valuation by customs officials, and finding a lasting solution to the persistent gridlock in their papa corridor, and a holistic review of the operational activities of security agencies at the port. On behalf of the council and the membership of the LCCI, I congratulate the members of the Maritime Group of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry. I would like to welcome all our stakeholders in the industry. We're going to be hearing from a series of very serious, very strong stakeholders in the maritime industry. And that segment is going to be anchored by Mrs. Koluke Atimolat. And we thank all of you for being here. And I can't wait to hear your contributions to this conversation. I would also like to recognize our dear friends from the media. We thank the media for your unflinching support of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry. And we look forward to a generous coverage of this event. Once again, I welcome everyone to this event. Thank you so much for honoring our invitation and thank you for attention. I look forward for it to a good discourse. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Madam President, for that wonderful presentation. As we all know, that this event is a star-studded one. We have veterans in the sector, people who have made indelible mark in their own right. And we are pleased at the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry to have these industry giants. And it's my pleasure and singular honor to invite and present to us one of the giants in the industry, in the person of Chief Adebayo Sarumi, former MD, Nigerian Ports Authority. Good to have you, Chief. Over to you, sir. Madam President of the Lagos Chamber of Thomas, other distinguished members of uh, the management, and I greet especially my other very good friend, Munda Lawal, who's been doing a wonderful job, even as presidency keeps changing and He's been the one at the helm of affairs and ensuring that the ship 
continues to be on course. I greet all who are with us here, particularly those who keep the flag after some of us have retired and are sitting back watching what is happening. I particularly welcome Margaret, my dear sister from another mother, and I welcome all others too, whose many names, if I start to uh, decide, I'm reading them out now, I will take much of your time. Well, let me go straight into issues that brought about my participation in this program. I have Madam President, who's been not only a family friend, but also our consultants in our private business in terms of management, systems, policies, as well as uh, recruitment of uh, staff. Madam, I want to take the opportunity to thank you most sincerely for giving us the opportunity to be able to work the way it should be, particularly in the wider sector. Remembering that some of us spent the greater part of our life working in the government and regulatory sector. Now, uh, the issue, when Madam made raised this issue of widening the scope of participation of the chamber in issues concerning the maritime industry, my first reaction was this, thank God somebody is beginning to see something much wider than the opportunities they've always had. Let me mention that by the virtue of my own training, I came into this industry in the early 70s, and I left towards the uh, middle part of 2007, during which time I had watched the LCCI very closely as, and its interaction, particularly with issues of policy formulation as it concerns transport sector, but with particular reference to the maritime industry. The chamber that I used to know was a chamber that had to be contacted on virtually every issue that evolved. When I had the opportunity of serving on the Transport Sector Reform Committee first, as General Manager Marine of Nigerian Post Authority, later on as Managing Director of Nigeria Ship, and then finally as the Managing Director of Nigerian Post Authority who had to be the one to midwife the port reform sector. I found something very rather strange, and that was the absence of the contribution of commerce and industry. And I say this one advisedly, and I say it with all seriousness as well too. I wonder where the paper was when we were handling the issues of transport sector reform. And then also, even after we have finished and we had launched the port reform uh, 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 issues, I didn't find much of the chamber being present there. This is not going, this is not blaming anybody for whatever it is that is happening, but probably the situation will have been much better than what we have now. Uh, we, and when I say we, I mean me and my colleagues, both past and present, who had the opportunity of serving government. We have, we used to have our own limitations. Government will tell you precisely this is the way they want to go. But you as the operator that deal with consumers of shipping services, and every day you know what is happening in the sector, you will wish that government listen to the private sector a little more. I can say, Madam President, that I didn't find much of uh, the participation of the private sector in the transport sector reform services. Neither did I find the private sector being involved even when we were, let me mention that the port reform issue is a very bold one. 
and this is not by way of being uh, apologetic for any government. I ceased to work for government some 14, 15 years ago. But uh, the point still remains that the port serves the private sector. The port in other parts of the world don't even belong to the government. But of course, ports belong to government, not only ports, railways, shipping lines and things like that. So sometimes even airlines belong to government, belonged to government in the past, simply because there weren't others who were willing to take the gauntlet and provide the services that needed to be provided for the economy. But then that same government, way back some 25, 30 years ago, decided that they were going to stay back, step back and let the private sector take the active part in the rendition of services, particularly in the transport sector. But what I find, both by way of experience as well as uh, by way of uh, observation, is that the private sector kept falling back and saying, yes, it's government's business, it's not our business. Yes, it is government's business, it was government's business by then. Just as government was the one that used to have daily times as the number one newspaper, but when they found out that Nigerians were ready to take over that aspect of the job, they left the field. And you know how many private uh, newspapers we have in Nigeria today? A time there was when it was only NTA that was the only organ that we have of television and dissemination of uh, information and education. Now today we know what is happening in there. Beyond the few people, maybe about 26 of them, who to whom port, various port operations were concessioned. I wonder whether any group of people, and I'm, challenge, I'm challenging, particularly challenging members of the Lagos Chamber, how many of us have taken advantage of government to withdrawal from direct operation to take part in service rendition, even to take part, even for those who are working for the concessionaires, to even put them on their toes by ensuring that the, the level of service that we wanted them to give, they are still giving that level of service and to blow the whistle, even they were not doing as much as we thought they should do. Let me give one instance. There is this instance of uh, what I will call the logistics, which Madam President just mentioned. Uh, we are very good, all of us are very good at mentioning what the problems are. Take, for example, vehicular traffic and how it dovetails with efficiency in port services. Of course, we might say that the roads are not the business of uh, the private sector. All the roads leading to the port belong to the government and they should have done something about that. But then uh, port location all over the world keep changing every day. And of course you have to be extremely rich to be able to leave the port where, which has been overrun by the city to go into to brand, totally brand new area. It's an extremely expensive thing. And I don't blame government for this, but we can manage whatever it is that we have. Take for example, we are housing. How many members of the chamber have taken warehousing as a serious work? Take, for example, this new ETO or the call off system. Take, for example, truck parks. Those are opportunities that will have been taken in the past, not only when we now have the problem of uh, approach to the port. Uh, we're now running helter skelter and even distorting the land use pattern within the metropolis to say, okay, yes, we will take this place over and use it as a place to park trucks and the rest of it. Or even take, for example, where were we in the chambers when the entire port corridor was being clogged up? by those who now decided and they continue to do so 
establishing tank farms alongside the road. If you take, for example, from Ijora up to mile two, there are no less than 12 or 13. And I'm told that they are even increasing. I haven't been around there for some time. I'm told that they are even increasing. Where was the chamber when they were doing this? We used to bring in all the petroleum products into Atlas Cove and by way of piping, and that way we thought we saved the problem as 1,000 or more trucks having to find themselves on the roads to the port. But today, under what is called deregulation of the uh, downstream sector of uh, 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 petroleum services, what do we have? As many as 2,000 are still clogging up the roads. What I'm trying to say here is that when this one was, if we had been able to nip it in the board by taking active part, and I'm challenging the LCCI because I still remember that LCCI of those days, Madam President, it's not your fault. It's not even the fault of the immediate past uh, executives of uh, LCCI, but I'm talking of uh, some little time in the past. Even the budget before it was formulated, LCCI was contacted. And even when the budget is finished with, even before it is read out, LCCI is called to have a preview of it. And at the time point at which the Minister of Finance is reading out the budget, LCCI is taking very prominent part. That way, possibly if LCCI have been very, very uh, observant, they probably would not have allowed the downward, downstream reg regulation that was going to clog up access to the port road or to the port sector, or to our ports. Now today we are all running helter skelter. They did not start only one day. They have been there a long time ago. And what, why did we allow this one to take part? Madam President, I'm not here to keep uh, blaming and blaming and blaming. Uh, the die is passed. The situation is already here. Uh, I, I think what is needed is that LCCI should be up and find their own type of solution to some of the problems that are militating against port efficiency and approach the appropriate authorities, whether the Ministry of Transport, whether the uh, management of Nigerian Post Authority, whether um, the, the, even at the level of the government, why not do that? Maybe you could also work with them. I mentioned something about um, uh, logistics as well too, inclusive of warehousing. Why would members of LCCI not take advantage of deregulation that came with port reform? deregulation that came with uh, withdrawal of government and handing over some of this to also use the advantage to do something. Margaret might not want me to mention this, but I had uh, an opportunity of discussing with her sometime. And she told me she was taking up one of the uh, call-up areas. She was buying some piece of land, taking up some call-up call -up areas and trying to establish a truck terminal how many more Nigerians have taken this matter up? And I'm not talking of uh, those who are distorting the land use pattern, taking uh, land in residential areas and turning them into uh, either container terminal or, or truck terminal. That's not what I'm talking about. They don't even have to be within those areas. We could go on creating corridors outside even the city gates. And then the same call-up system that the Nigerian Post Authority has put in position can be used to decide who is coming in and who is not coming in. Madam President, Ma, how many of your members have approached their bankers to say that they will buy new trucks? The average age of trucks on Nigerian roads today 
is about 30 years, and I'm in a position to know that. I remember as part of the port reform uh, activities, one of the things we said is that no matter what we do, port efficiency will not be total and complete unless you are able to improve. What about the budget operations? How many of us as uh, players in the maritime sector, in the private part of maritime sector have gone into budget such that you don't have to have so many things going on the road? Yes, of course, government is lacking behind the requirements in terms of uh, 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 infrastructural facilities that are required. But government is trying, and I drop my heart for them. I just read a few days ago that the, the, the rail uh, uh, corridor that's going back into the port, which had been moribund for quite some time, is being improved, and it will be possible now for containers to be loaded outside the port. All these, the port inefficiency at the end of the day is not something that the government alone can do. So the private sector should be able to take the gauntlet and see to what extent they themselves can also support. And I tell you, Madam President, ma, that there is a lot of profits to be made from involvement in this. But if we all play, play uh, the ostrich, we put, put our heads in the sand and uh, we say as if it doesn't concern us, it boomerangs back on us. Port efficiency boomerangs back on your business and the business of your membership generally. And I can prove that one, one million times over and over, but time does not permit me. You give me only just a few minutes to, 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 to discuss generally. So what I'm trying to say in effect is this. I'm not reinventing the wheel. I have, I have seen from the list of people who are here that there are people who can even get better solutions to the problem of uh, port efficiency by asking uh, that all of us as private sector take more active part to provide something that can also uh, ameliorate what the government has done by trying to improve the infrastructure and I see what is happening on the road from the port now almost to the toll gate. I see what is happening with the rail. That's a beautiful one. I see all the things that are happening all over the whole place. But what about the one that government would not need to take part in? Warehousing, logistics, including road and badge operations. What about the issue also? Madam Secretary, marine insurance. What about the issue also, Madam Secretary, Stevie Doring? What about the issue of even equipment leasing? What equipment leasing? One of the problems that I know that the people to whom we handed over, one of the problems that I know that they had is that they are not able to even get the, the banks to support them to be able to buy port equipment that are needed for today's that type of operation in the port sector. Whereas banks are very ready to assist a typical importer who will just import uh, uh, finished goods 90 days, they give him the money, he makes about 10,000% profit, and I don't know what he does with his profit, he doesn't even add anything, he clocks up the road, what about them? And then, of course, this issue, Madam Secretary, of uh, the export side of it. There could be export receiving warehouses where you could do a little bit of value addition. Export could come from the, uh, from the upland into those warehouses where they can be consolidated, they can be uh, uh, processed, semi-processed or processed as the case may be, even or inclusive of uh, uh, containerizing them and sending them back into the port sector. These are some of the things that I think the transport sector also, the, the ASCCI wants to assist us to do, particularly about the issue. I, it is not just enough, Ma, and for other members of LCCI to talk about corruption. What role is LCCI itself doing in giving government intelligence information that can assist them 
to nip in the board, or not even to, to nip in the board, to assist them to uh, get the situation much better than what we have today. In what way have we been sending our various views, suggestions, as private sector people who are more exposed than what profit sector is? We've traveled far and wide. We've been here, we've been there. What are we doing to assist government by giving government information that are needed, by giving government suggestions that are needed, by ensuring that also we provide those services, ancillary services, without which you will never have a port reform of any kind. Madam Secretary, before I round up, particularly since I know Margaret is there with you, I wonder how many members of SOAN, that's Ship Owners Association of Nigeria, of which uh, Margaret is a very staunch member, are your members there? I wonder how many of your members are members of uh, NISA, that's Nigerian Independent Ship Owners Association. How many of you have been able to also buy ships to put on trade? Even if it's only short term sea trade between us and our neighbors, particularly given the African uh, uh, continental free trade that will serve us between our ports and the ports of uh, the region within the something under the cabotage uh, regime. And out there, Madam President, are the opportunities that we have under the cabotage act or what and what you can take advantage of by way of incentives. If you approach Nemasa, Nemasa will be able to tell you how much more. But we will not just all be traders and then sit down there and we keep criticizing and we keep saying all oh, this is not good. So I want to seek the indulgence of uh, members of the Lagos Chamber. But uh, all that I'm trying to say is to encourage you to also take active part, providing services, ancillary services likely to bring about efficiency in the, not only in the port sector, but the entire maritime sector of the economy. I pause here and uh, I am still standing by to take part in the debates that will follow. I might uh, have the opportunity of coming back to you. Okay. Let me round up here now by saying I'm indeed very grateful for drawing me out. As a matter of fact, as you can see, I'm in my sitting room because my sitting room is also my boardroom. Also, my uh, uh, as we are, I am CEO. So please pardon me that I'm not in a tie and I'm not in a suit, but all the same, that still does not prevent me from uh, being able to. I might possibly be a little uninformed simply because I have retired. So if I say anything out of ignorance of what you have been able to contribute, I seek your pardon. And uh, probably when I have a lot more of what is happening in the chamber itself, uh, through your there and uh, also those who will follow. And I want to ask uh, Muda uh, Yusuf to let it be known that I'm now part and parcel of you Please let me know what is happening in there. And I have already promised Madam President that as much as possible, my opinion is sought, I will give it freely. Even where I'm not given information to me, I will readily uh, be able to say something. I thank you very much once again for giving me the opportunity to uh, take part in this beautiful. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. We appreciate your interventions and um, words of advice. Um, we know that uh, you, it's not easy to have a veteran like you, sir, um, join us at this afternoon. So we sincerely appreciate your contribution, sir. And next, we would like to have um, very quickly before we move on to the contribution of other stakeholders in the sector. We would like to have Mrs. Margaret Orakusi um, to please present a very brief remarks before we move on to panel discussion. Mrs. Margaret Orakusi, over to you, ma'am.
Hello, I, I guess um, we, I know we have uh, Mrs. Margaret Araquisi. Hello, madam. Okay, um, I guess um, she, she's possible. She's having a technical inch there, um, but maybe we'll be able to take a comment later on. Um, we are trying to unmute. Okay, I, I, okay. I, I guess she's having some um, challenges with the with the audio, with the audio. But uh, at this point, um, we will just move on to the next item on the agenda, which is um, the panel discussion comments from key stakeholders in the sector, and to moderate that um, session. We have um, Mrs. Foluke Akimoladu. Ak Mrs. Foluke Akimoladu is the managing solicitor, Trizon Law Chambers. She will be our moderator today. Um, over to you, our moderator. Good to see you, madam. Um. Good good afternoon, everyone. Um, I Mr. Shagwalabi, can you hear me, please? We can all hear you, madam. We oh, okay. Now I now I can hear myself. I wasn't hearing any all feedback. Right. Um, good afternoon, good afternoon, uh, distinguished participants. May I quickly uh, um, say a very special uh, thank you to my very dear president, uh, Madam Toki. I uh, thank you, ma, for the privilege um, of anchoring this very important session. Um, distinguished ladies and gentlemen of the press, uh, I greet you. Um, I'll quickly just go into the discussion sessions today. What we are essentially trying to do is to um, highlight the need and importance for the Nigerian maritime sector to be um, a focal point in terms of repositioning Nigeria as a maritime nation um, with the African Continental Free Trade Agreement coming on board and with African cabotage at Nigeria's fingertips. This is an opportunity for us uh, to make it uh, to make Nigeria count as a maritime nation. Um, without further ado, I'll be calling on our first speaker, Mr. Jo Jolene Joan. Please, uh, please forgive me if I did not pronounce your name right. He is the managing director of Samsung uh, Heavy Industries Nigeria Limited. He will be speaking on uh, things with respect to ship machinery and equipment. Uh, please, uh, every, all speakers have a, a minimum of three minutes, a maximum of five. So I, I would really appreciate it if we're time conscious in, um, in our um, presentations. Um, Mr. Joanne, if you are on the call, kindly unmute yourself, sir. The floor is yours. Mr. Shagwin, is Mr. Joan with us, please? Mr. Shagwin. Mr. Akimolado, I've looked at the list. He doesn't appear to be here. I think we might as well move on. Move on. Oh, OK. Noted, ma. Um, oh, OK, the, our next speaker is Dr. Amy Jadisimi. Um, she's the managing director of the Lagos Deep Offshore Logistics Base, Lador. If um, Dr. Jadisimi is here, um, can she kindly unmute herself? I'll just quickly check. 
I believe she's not. Okay, so um, I I'll be representing her. Good afternoon. Oh, okay. Good afternoon. Yes. What's the name, sir? So I can call My you name out. Is Kalejai. Okay. Okay. Please, sir, you have the floor. Yes, I'm the um, public senior public relation officer for Bado. Um, MB sent her apologies for not being able to join um, this afternoon because of other uh, engagements that uh, she has, and uh, is kindly accept uh, her apologies. So uh, I'll be standing in for her for the three minutes or less that um, assigned to this part. I want to say uh, good afternoon to everyone. Good afternoon to the president, council members, and um, also to uh, chief. Um, we all know that the maritime sector um, has um, a large potential to actually contribute to Nigerian economy. In fact, it remains an untapped area because we have the largest coastline in West Africa, and these um, can actually provide sustainable economic development for Nigeria. Without my saying words, they are truly. Um, these, these potentials are truly largely untapped. Now, um, Chief did talk about warehousing. We, we at Lado, we actually do provide warehousing specifically for um, our clients in, in the um, offshore industry, oil and gas industry. Um, this also is open to everyone, especially for agriculture, because we are actually um, looking into that field to provide um, uh, logistic support and also we have support for other sectors of the economy, specifically agriculture. So we also know that the maritime industry um, can play a pivotal role for the natural economy. In fact, during COVID, we realized that uh, while other sectors of the economy were shut down, the maritime sector played a huge role in sustaining uh, the Nigerian economy. For instance, the ports were still open, were still open, were largely functional, and, and this show goes along with that. Yes, the maritime industry can and truly remains um, a huge um, potential. In fact, when completely harnessed or tapped into, it's going to just dwarf revenue um, uh, generation that we already have from the oil and gas industry. So. It is, it is no um, um, uh, surprise that the maritime sector is, is a vital role in your economy. So for, for like I said, for us in Lado, we, we are open to this opportunity and that is why we took that step to become a member of LCCI last year and also joining this uh, noble group to the maritime group of LCCI. And we are willing, ready to work to make our own contribution in terms of um, policy, uh, contributing our own policy uh, a suggestion to the to the council and also extension to the federal government. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kone Um We'll quickly go ahead now to the our next speaker, Mr. Ataku Inyong. Gudo, like I mentioned earlier, I'm sorry, sir, if I didn't pronounce your name properly. Uh, he is the managing director of Capricorn Marine Technologies PLC, and he will be speaking with respect to marine services in the in the sector. Um, Mr. Ataku, if you're on the call, kindly unmute, sir. The floor is yours. Kindly on mute, sir. Okay. Good afternoon, President, Vice President, and all members of the Capital of the Marine Group in SCI and all protocols of South. I'm speaking on behalf of uh, Ataku Yaudo, the Managing Director of Capricorn Marine Technologies PLC, uh, unavoidably absent at this meeting. Uh, Capricorn Marine. Technology PSC has been in the marine sector since 1998. Basically, in the areas of the shipbuilding, vessel hire, we have so many other things. We have difficulties in the marine sector when it comes to 
issue of basically what actually can the marine sector do in the SCCI. And at the last year meeting, we we are able to look at possibilities of the expansion of the ports. We are basically told about Burutu and Wari, and we are looking forward to where these ports can actually be expanded. Capital My Technologies PLC is willing and ready to assist the LCCI in any area that has services are required. We want to be very emphatic on the issue of ensuring that the areas of port development, port expansion, as mentioned by Chief Adeba Yasrimi, that the area of port development are actually uh, looked into because there have been difficulties of ensuring that most of these goods get into the hinterland, like Burutu and Wari have not been fully utilized. So we feel that SCI through this uh, marine group can be able to expand the ports to make sure that we decongest basically uh, Lagos and other seaports by going into the hinterland. We are willing to assist and contribute all that we, we have in our own kitty to support the group. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, sir. Uh, I would then uh, go on to a very renowned maritime lawyer, uh, Mr. Emeka Akabogu um, of Akabogu and Associates. Uh, he will be speaking on with respect to the regulatory space for uh, with respect to maritime. Um, sir, if you're with us, kindly unmute. The floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much and good afternoon, um, everybody. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say I um, appreciate the efforts of um, the LCCI, particularly the president, this is uh, uh, Toki Magbogunje, for this uh, very important initiative. Um, Mr. Dr. Muda Lawal, too, thank you very much for the efforts. Now, I think what's crucial is that the industry is able to harness its potentials. And um, I absolutely agree with um, uh, most of the things that's been uh, articulated by uh, veteran and the elder statesman, uh, Chief Sarumi. But um, I'd like to, as the young people say, cut some slack um, for the uh, chamber. There's only so much that the chamber can do uh, in regard to many of the incidents which uh, Chief Sarumi has spoken about, um, particularly as there are specific industry organizations which have more direct um, relationships with uh, industry regulators. However, I think the essence of this today's event and the idea behind the maritime sector group is um, precisely the point where the chamber comes in, which is, to harness the uh, diff different policy positions of different subsector groups for the purpose of having um, industry initiatives in um, uh, a uniform and harmonized direction. So that, that's really the way to go. Um, it's important that um, also we have this uh, platform for the purpose of um, you know, holding the regulators accountable in very specific ways. As individuals, mm -hmm. it's, it's as individual organizations and even as individual persons, it's often um, difficult, particularly where there are vested interests, to be able to directly engage or speak against some of those issues which um, afflict the industry because in the environment in which we are, um, government vendetta or regulatory vendetta is not out of question. But where the LCCI as a group speaks and intervenes, then it helps to push the narrative in the direction which the industry wants. So I think what we are doing today is very good. Um, all I can say on the subject of discussion is that really um, the uh, entirety of the maritime industry is available as a gold mine 
for the operators, but also for the economy as a whole. It's um, an important facilitatory um, uh, element of trade, and it really is um, the driver for many other sectors. So it is up to the industry to really run the engines effectively to ensure that these potentials um, leave the remit of being potentials and are translated into value. So I think I'd like to just uh, keep it at that for now. And uh, once again, thank the LCCI for um, commencing this initiative or reconnecting with this initiative and also for um, inviting all of us here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Um... Of course, always straight to the point as usual. Um, I have the honor now of um, calling upon uh, Mrs. Fumul uh, Madam Fumulayo Follow, I'm sure she is the Secretary General of the African Ship Owners, um, the Continental Body, and uh, one of uh, Nigeria's foremost ship owner advocates. Um, I have the pleasure of calling upon Madam Follow, I'm sure kindly unmute, Ma, the floor is yours. On behalf of the association, I congratulate the LCCI for this landmark event, especially as it comes within the first four months of the official takeoff of the African Free Trade Agreement. I believe that the inauguration of this group at this time will afford the Nigerian maritime industry a louder voice stronger advocacy platform to ensure Nigeria's better participation in the AFCFTA. As co-champion of the Nigerian AFCFT transportation sector, in my capacity as the Secretary General of the African Ship Owners Association, which includes the exclusive group of Nigerian ship owners who participate in carriage of African cargo, wet and dry. I pledge my support to the LCCI and look forward to working with the group. Madam President, Vice President, the Director General of the CI, I commend you, I appreciate you, and for me, there's no better time than now for this initiative. Nigerian ship owners worldwide have been identified as having the potential leading in lifting of African cargo. I wish to state here and now that the number of Nigerians who have flagged out Nigerian flags and the quality quantity of their vessel is a little bit higher than what we have in the Nigerian register of ships. However, the potential that Nigeria has to lead in lifting of African cargo, it's just a potential. And converting it to wealth and reality involves a lot of work. And then this is where I suggest that our newly inaugurated my time and I am already part of the group because I see it as a formidable group even from this state. I look forward to this group I lead, not strong, lead advocates for Nigerian fleet, African car. And look, Madam President, Vice President and all members of the group is something that we must start and start now. Once again, I thank you for inviting me. I promise to be an active of this group and look forward to driving with you this initiative, the reasons for this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Follow and Show. Um, I will, will now quick, will now go on to Captain Marvin Abe. He is the managing director of Apapa Bulk Terminal Limited. 
and he will be speaking with respect to um, terminal operators, that's uh, private terminal operators. Um, sir, Captain Marvin, if you are on the call, kindly unmute, the floor is yours, sir. Good afternoon, uh, Madam Foluke, thank you. And uh, good afternoon, Madam President. And uh, let me stand on existing protocols to save some time. I, I thank you for inviting me, first of all, and I'd like to just talk quickly on, so that this doesn't become a, another talk shop. It's a good initiative for SCCI to consider the Maritime Forum and then uh, set it up because it's long overdue. So I'm glad it's here now and also as Act 5 is coming on. So at least we can leverage uh, the industry's experience. For anything to function in our industry in Nigeria, and you may wonder why this conversation we're having today probably was had in the 70s and probably in the 80s and maybe in the 90s. But here we are, 2021, we're still on the same conversation. And that could be because we still haven't sorted what needs to be sorted. So first things first, to build a house, you put the foundation in place and then you go ahead to build the house. So we need to resolve the issues we have with our foundation in the industry. And that is a regulatory agency. As we all know, the maritime industry is all interconnected. Uh, we cannot work in isolation. Some other industries have that benefit, but in the maritime industry, you are connected with regional as well as the uh, sub-regional and international bodies. So through the IMO and all others, you are connected to the same common regulations and the rest of them. So if we have the right frame in place for ship regulation, the uh, regulatory agency, and we get it right at that level, then the building blocks will come on. And the likes of frustrations expressed by the previous speaker uh, wouldn't occur because uh, the right plugs will fit the right hole, so to say, in simple terms. And where that is creating issues are in, uh, for example, shipbuilding. Uh, Korea, Japan first, took the technology from Europe. So a quick example, and then initiated a shipbuilding industry and utilized that to develop its own ship classification agency. And so they have their own classification society, shipbuilding industry, and the rest of the ancillary industries grew to take advantage. South Korea saw that and quickly learned and did the same. Today, they are the largest shipbuilder. China, who is also a neighbor, spotted that advantage and has just copied the same thing. And today, we are now having lots of Chinese built ships. And China Classification Society is also now a force to be reckoned with. I am aware of the time it started and the negative press it received and the resistance it got from the powers that be in the classification society. But they forged ahead with developing standardization, ensuring they comply with uh, standards and processes and conventions. And today, everybody is going there to build their ships. So it's not an impossible task for Nigeria. There is nothing special they're doing. They just put the right frame in the right places. So we need to get our act together with the uh, regulatory agency. And I'm talking about NEMASA. And LCCI, you do have a very uh, advantage position to advocate for that. If we get that right, then the basic building blocks of the maritime sector will already be in place. So we've scored the first key point. We will earn our respect amongst the maritime nations. So when regulations are being promulgated at IMO level, we will be listened to when we're talking. Right now, if we voice our opinion, no one will listen because you are not even uh, able to put your house together. So no one will listen. And that's a key problem we have. So respect will be earned, and then we will be able to put things together. If we don't achieve that, when we get to at far level, where we want to have a Nigerian cabotage, regional cabotage, we will face the same problem where our ships will be there and they'll be looked at from the corner uh, with the corner of the eye saying, yeah, they're Nigerian flags, so leave them alone. They just say, maybe they have money, they can manage it, so leave them alone. We won't be patronized. And again, we will shortchange ourselves. No one else, we will shortchange ourselves. Uh, today, I, I listened to uh, media a few days ago, and Ghana seems to, as if they are playing the game with us. They seem to be catching up quickly and trying to take advantage of what we are not seeing. And they are building those building blocks in Ghana to take advantage. And the rest of the maritime industry will simply migrate to Ghana. It's simple. 
the ship owner will go to a place where it's convenient. The, uh, even Nigerian ship owners have ships registered overseas. They're not regi registered in Nigeria. This same uh, industry knows about them. They recognize them. And so if charity is not good enough at home, who else will be a foreigner that will come to embrace it for us? So we fix the massa, fix that area of the industry, and you have a key role to play as this year to help us solve that. If you fix that, if we can fix that, you will see the rest of the industry will grow because then we will even start shipbuilding. The so-called shipbuilding industries we have in Nigeria today are very small because they go through a lot of headwinds to be able to, to, be able to do anything. If we get that side right, then they will have the opportunity. Our classification society will be developed locally, we will get the recognition we deserve, we will be on the IMO most of the time. So when decisions are taken that impacts on the third world countries, we will have a voice and be able to insist on things and programs that will favor our country. Thank you very much, ma'am, for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Captain Marvin. Uh, quite quite a, a veteran in the space, if I may say so myself. Um, our next speaker is our final speaker on, in this session, and certainly not the least. Um, he is Mr. Aminu Umar. He is the Managing Director, CEO of Sea Transport Group, um, one of uh, Nigeria's uh, largest ship owning companies. Um, Mr. Umar, the floor is yours, sir. Kindly unmute. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Barista Fonuke. And uh, greetings to all the uh, members. I first let me thank the president of uh, LCCI and the director general. Uh, we are, I'm so privileged and uh, honored to be on this uh, sectoral group. And I am so happy that uh, ship owners, I think the most of the discussion is uh, more on the ship owning side uh, as part of the subsector in the maritime uh, maritime uh, industry. I uh, had uh, what our uh, very revered, respected uh, Chief Dako Saromi uh, challenging uh, most of us in the, uh, in the industry, as well as uh, the remark from uh, Captain Abe. I, I, I really, uh, we are so, first of all, let me uh, answer uh, Chief Saromi. Yes, uh, so one members are on this uh, committee or on this panel, uh, apart from Madam Margaret, Myself, I'm also a member of SOAN, and I think I've seen uh, uh, Temisan. Mr. Temisan is also, I think, uh, some, uh, I see him on, the, uh, on this uh, panel. Then uh, NISA also is represented because I'm also, we are also doubling on that. So really, the ship owners are highly uh, a part of this. I, I must uh, throw the line of uh, Captain Abe and as well as uh, uh, Barista Emeka Akagbo to say how important and how vital uh, the ship owners that, uh, the, that this panel is going to play in advocacy, particularly for the issues and uh, we have on the, in the industry. I will cite you some examples and I'm really excited. Uh, why, are, why, why am I excited? I happen to be part of a ministerial committee that we had an engagement with the CBN relating to their manuals how it affects uh, ship owners. And uh, one of the, uh, some years back, I think about 2019, before, before coronavirus started, we had a meeting with one of the directors and they have made changes that negatively affect uh, ship owners. And when we ask uh, to see why is uh, this uh, changes made, and they say, oh, we have engaged with you. And we said, are you sure? Because none of us that are there, have been uh, know about the engagement and they called the person who did the engagement in Lagos and he pointed out some uh, group which happened coincidentally are uh, I think uh, maybe part of the LCCI but there is no ship owner among them so they did uh, based on the what they know they gave them the advice and that change uh, negatively impact us uh, as ship owners in terms of uh, foreign exchange uh, transfers which we are unable to do but uh, this it will take two years to sort out. So hopefully now that we are part of LCCI, we might bring uh, our own part of the contribution and then we can look at how to see, uh, we can put a change to that uh, policy that is put in place. And this uh, said, I have uh, heard uh, what Chief Saromi said, why the non-participation, why non-investments are happening. 
in our sector, particularly the subsector, which is ship owning, and looking at the opportunities that is likely to come with uh, this uh, new African trade. I, uh, there are so many uh, factors that affect us, and just I think uh, Captain Abe has already uh, said some. The everything have to start from here. The regulatory side of it, as well as the support from the uh, our national from here, that is what will uh, jumpstart uh, to build these capacities in order for us to harness this opportunity. And we are so excited to be part of this uh, with LCCI to champion this advocacy in order to see that we are part of the uh, group that uh, catalyzes this change or this capacity development, because the opportunities are huge. I give you an example. Pre-COVID-19, there is, I think uh, we see the record says about 17,000 uh, port calls of vessels comes to Nigerian ports. And if you look at this in the number and just estimate at worst case, the freight element for these 17,000 port calls, at worst case, we say $500,000 as freight. We are talking of about eight to $9 billion per annum of freight earnings, which if you look at all the vessels out of these 17,000, Nigerians, uh, Nigerians own is not up to 10%. And it means we are generating over $9 billion to develop other economies outside the country. And this, I feel it is not right. I believe that there are a lot of things uh, we can do to participate more and gain a lot of percentage, which, uh, which will increase as a matter of fact with the coming of the African Free Trade uh, Agreement coming up now, because uh, there are opportunities which today we don't have by uh, in the Afri intra-African trade, which are coming up uh, uh, very soon. And if we don't have the assets, that can do this, then we will be out of this, uh, this market. So, and as uh, we all know that the country needs us to be able to bring down, to bring up this uh, economy, to bring this money or this FX that is all fitted out of this country while we are all uh, sitting here. So really I am uh, very excited to be part of this and I, I thank you all for making it possible. And I, I wish us uh, that we will continue this advocacy to make more Nigerians come and participate in this uh, industry. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, this, uh, this brings an end to the discussion sessions. Um, thank you uh, once again, LCCI, for granting me the privilege of moderating this session. I humbly hand over now to uh, Mr. Shegun to, to continue from here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Oluke Akimoladun. You've been a wonderful ally. You've been a wonderful partner uh, with us at the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry. And we appreciate your efforts so far on um, and this afternoon. Um, next, we our time is fast spent and we know we are all very busy people. So we just move straight um, to the official inauguration, the official launch of the LCCI Maritime Sectoral Group. It's my pleasure to invite the president of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, our able president, Mrs. Toki Mabobuje, to please officially inaugurate the Maritime Sector Group. Madam President, you have the floor, ma'am. Thank you very much, Dr. Shegun Alabi. Um, let me first thank Mrs. Fubuke Akimoladun for your wonderful moderation of the panel session. That was really good. Thank you so much. Um, I want to say that um, I'm so glad to get validation from all the extremely strong stakeholders that we had as panelists here and to hear what you all had to say it validates the fact that um, we, we really need to coalesce and uh, collaborate and, and um, partner together to ensure that this maritime sector emerges to be the strong sector that it's meant to be. I was very glad to hear the comments um, 
around um, the things that were said by Captain Abe and, and Mr. Omar about some of the fundamental issues, you know, and the role that the chamber um, is likely to play in, 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 in harnessing uh, one, the opportunities that exist for private sector to increase its engagement, and two, in harnessing resources to be able to begin to suggest to government, uh, ministries, departments, and agencies about the creative solutions that we're all going to be working towards in order to ensure that our maritime sector takes its pride of place um, on the world stage, and, and particularly in Africa. That being said, um, I will be counting, the council, uh, myself, we will be counting on all the stakeholders here present to be a very strong part of, of that movement to ensure that we get to this promised land that we've been looking at all these years. That being said, it is my pleasure and it is my honor on behalf of the Council of Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry to inaugurate the Maritime Group of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry to the glory of God and for the progress of the Nigerian economy in general. Thank you very much. The group is hereby inaugurated. Congratulations. Wonderful, wonderful. Congratulations, congratulations to all the members of the group. And thank you very much, Madam President, for doing us the honors. And at this point, we've come a very long way this afternoon. It's my pleasure to invite um, the Director General of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry to please have um, the closing remarks and move the votes of thanks. Over to you, sir, DG. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Shebu. Uh, first, let me, on behalf of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, express our very profound appreciation to all our participants on the call this afternoon. We sincerely appreciate your presence and we are not taking it for granted. Uh, the significance and the critical role of the maritime sector uh, has been variously underscored in the various uh, discussions and presentations. And just as the speakers have said, to strengthen the sector, we need to get regulations right. We also need to get policies right. But this requires a collective action. It requires synergy. It requires collaboration. And it also requires an inclusive strategy. Because from what you have seen, this sector is perhaps one of the most diverse sectors that you can find in the economy. So the principle of inclusion is very, very critical in achieving success. We also need evidence-based advocacy, and this also requires that the chamber is in touch with all the key players in the sector, so that when we are engaging the government, we have evidence to support our engagement. Because the government, no doubt, needs quality partners, to give quality advice. Because our experience in advocacy is that most times, even some of these policies and regulations are taken out of ignorance because uh, we don't have a very coherent uh, position being presented to government with evidence to support what we desire in the private sector. So that is why the, this, this group is important. Uh, we also appreciate the fact that we need to make the sector a lot more participatory by the indigenous players. Uh, of course, we appreciate foreign investment in all sectors, but it is also very important that we also mainstream the indigenous players because there's a lot of value in also getting our indigenous players to be part of all the key sectors in this economy. 
we want to appeal to all those who are present here, for those of them that are not yet members of the chamber, we'll be reaching out to you uh, so that together uh, we can you know, take this sector forward and we can also engage appropriately with all the relevant agencies to create the right environment that we desire for the sector. Uh, the president and the, uh, the council will soon be coming forward with a governance structure for this group, and you will all be duly uh, contacted for that so that we can be up and running. So on that note, I want to specially express our appreciation to our veteran, Eda Stisman, Chief Adebayo Sarumi, for finding time uh, to join us this afternoon. And no matter how smart we are as new generation, we need experience to guide us. So we value the experience that he has shared and uh, we will continue uh, to reach out to him uh, to support us with those valuable experience. I'd like to thank Mrs. Orakusi. I'd like to thank all our panelists that have been here and Mrs. Akimoladu our uh, able mod moderator. Uh, then I'd like to also thank, of course, our chief host, the president of the Labor Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Mrs. Tokima Bogunja. Uh, the president has been very passionate about this group. We have been on this for quite a while. So I'm happy that at least uh, this day has come. But more importantly is to sustain the momentum that we have set. Uh, our appreciation also goes to the Vice President in charge of membership and welfare of the LCCI, this is Mojishola Bakari. Once again, I'd like to thank uh, all the participants on this call. I thank you very much for finding the time to be with us. Thank you and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, the Director General of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Please, um, I would like to crave the indulgence of all participants to please enable um, your video so that we can have a, a group photograph of our speakers this afternoon. Please, could you kindly enable your video so that we can have a group photograph at this time? And um, on behalf of the president of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, I would like to say a very big thank you to all participants for finding our time to be with us this afternoon. And on that note, we have come to the two-in-one event, inauguration and also a, a, a symposium of some sort this afternoon. So we want to thank everyone and thank you for being part of the event. We have come to the end of the event today. Bye. See you some other time. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for being here. Have a wonderful day and enjoy the rest of your thank week. You. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shaggy. Welcome, man. Bye, man. Thank you. Bye, everyone. As a corporate entity in today's fast-paced and ever-changing environment, being part of a good network of business professionals and thought leaders is all you need to take your business to the next level. At the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, LCCI, we guarantee the promotion of trade, sound business ethic, and public policy advocacy that will help your business succeed. Founded in 1888 and with over 2,500 corporate members, we offer the best networking platform for business and profitability. Come talk to us today on how to become a member of the foremost Chamber of Commerce and Industry in Nigeria and Sub-Sahara Africa. Africa. For more information, please visit our corporate headquarters at Commerce House, 1 in the Wood Taylor Street, Victoria Island, Lagos, or visit our website on www.lagoschamber.com to learn more. LCCI, giving your business a voice.
The Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry has launched the Virtual Lagos International Trade Fair Virtual to Lagos bring International Trade local Fair and global to players to showcase and exhibit their goods and services. Explore